I appreciate you having the time to get to know me. I'm basically some guy who likes to keep active and have fun in intense scale. Hello, my name is Reiji, but you can call me Destroyer, D, DJ Pink Slip, Angry Llama, The Midnight Club Guy, Asian Dude with Crazy Hair, whatever. Over time, I've noticed that people can't seem to get my name right. So I would purposely call myself Renji or Reggie in different occasions to see if it gets over people's heads. I don't blame them though. It's funny that it's a hard name to spell or pronounce. I wouldn't consider myself to be a quote unquote YouTuber as I originally made this account to experiment for fun as a kid during school breaks. I'm just an ordinary guy that obtained these talents by being determined at these skill sets. I don't care to be famous. I don't see that being popular equates to success because being way too famous compromises your privacy and I seriously value the privacy of those around me. I just see fame and influence as a tool to help reach your goals faster. So what are the things about me and how I came about on YouTube? I remember simply setting this account up around the time I was too young to legally own a driver's license and land a job of my own. I was excited about driving cars to give me that sense of liberation to explore around the world at my own convenience. Now mind you, I lived in Las Vegas around that time and you can't really get anywhere without a car and I didn't have any money to ride a bus or invest in a bicycle. So to fill up my time during school breaks, I recorded videos of racing games using a capture card back when not that many people knew what a capture card was and that was probably one of the major factors why I gained some sort of following. I used a tool that wasn't known and easily accessible to the public at the time. It was somewhat innovative. Even had people ask me how I was able to record in such quality. Like I didn't even know what a capture card was before all that. I recall going to a mom and pop electronics store one fine day and simply asked someone working there if there was anything I can use to record directly through the TV. And the guy suggested me some Hapog AV terminal that you have to insert on your motherboard to get it to run. Me and my best friend at the time would mess around with it on various video games. And I just basically uploaded whatever gameplay video I thought looked cool and exciting. Apparently people liked my Midnight Club stuff so much that it made me the poster boy Midnight Club or the OG for some reason within this video sharing platform. I don't know how that happened out of nowhere. All I know is I just made racing game videos for fun as practice until I got my driver's permit. I mean, I totally would have been fine with my first set of videos only gaining 20 views total ever. Then I possibly moved on with my life afterwards. With these first videos, I guess I gained some sort of notoriety over talents I did not know I possessed. It's mainly about my driving skills in both video games and real life. People would say, oh Reggie, you're good at driving, or oh, you got some mad skills. No, I'm not good. Anyone can get to my level. It's just that, do you have the patience or not? That's all it really boils down to. So moving on to what I'm trying to get out of this. My ultimate goal with this platform really is to gain 100,000 subscribers organically. Just to get that congratulatory YouTube plaque award. That's where my end game's at. Now that doesn't mean once I reach 100,000 subscribers, I'll be like, ah, oh, screw my subscribers, I'm done making videos. No, that's not the case. It's just a neat accolade to tell the tale of what I've accomplished over the years. Just basically to tell them, hey, I didn't waste years of my young adult life messing around for nothing. Hopefully once I get past 100,000 subscribers, I can finally evolve my content past video games. And post stuff I actually want to post like real life car stuff and traveling. I've reached that age where that's what I want to do. Trying to figure out how to smoothly transition that to let the audience know you can reach for the stars if you work hard enough and not give up. The video game stuff is just the beginning of my vision. I'll get more into that near the end of this video. For those that have known me since the beginning, you would know that my first works had some ethnic aesthetics back then. If you look further back into my stuff, you know my videos were in Japanese and I'm basically Americanized at this point. I just basically apply whatever Japanese trends I thought were cool at the time. Even my Japanese audience always wonder why I speak in English and I'll try to thoroughly explain it to you guys in Japanese so here it goes. You might want to turn on subtitles for this one if you don't understand Japanese and want to know what I'm saying. ほんとんどの人は英語で返信して I basically said my core audience speak in English way more than Japanese. So I decided to stick with English instead. So these video making stuff as a teen were all fun and games to a point. Then I took a fat break after I acquired my driver's license. Moved on, diverted into different career ventures, and so on. Sometime later, Google was like, Hey, did you know you can make money making these videos? I'm like, wow! I finally have an outlet where I can reinvest into something I enjoy doing. 
That's cool because all the money I make here immediately goes back to sharpening the tools needed to improve the content quality. Since my content in this channel is about cars and exploration, I just get on top of the equipments needed and upgrade my cars to further hone my skills. I feel grateful and wanted to thank you guys for giving me the ability to make that possible. It would be a complete jerk move if you use the YouTube money for personal luxury and rub it to the faces to the people that allow you to make that happen. If I needed to pay the necessary bills to make it to the next day or wish to spend money lavishly, I would prefer to get multiple day jobs to cover that. Around the time I started making some money from YouTube, long videos became a trend to the platform now that everyone can upload past the former 15 minute threshold. With this new future at the time, I experimented into doing this thing called a long play. The first long play I made was one of the most popular Need for Speed games that I did a let's play a while back and just stitched it all into a single 2 hour video. Surprisingly, it succeeded way beyond my expectations. As I made more for experimenting purposes, I learned that this formula worked for me, so I decided to beat these video games in a unique way that solidified my own style from the rest. What sets me apart from all these other long players is that I try my best to tell a story or my own reinterpretation for each game to make it more enjoyable to watch. Whereas all these other fools try to simply beat the game with no effort or passion, just because it's a hot trending game, then just move on with whatever trend they try to exploit. Unlike most of these guys, I actually put a timestamp on all my long play videos and apply unique style to beating each game. I remember when my ex-girlfriend's younger cousin subscribed to me a while back and he was like, Ugh, I, do I really have to watch the whole video? I seriously have to watch the whole thing. And I'm like, no, you don't have to. I don't expect everyone to watch the entire thing all the time. There's a reason why I leave timestamps on my video descriptions and on the comments section. If you don't care about what happens in the middle of an uneventful part of a game and just want to see the final race or highlights, then I got you. There's also this misinterpretation that these gameplay videos doesn't have me talking over it because I'm not confident enough to show myself. That's not the case. Some of my past work is just raw gameplay because I'm looking at it at a long term. Sure, streaming is nice or doing a long play with my pretty 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 face plaster on it is good, but it can only do me so good for a very short period of time. Like what's that Midnight Club 2020 streams doing for me now? Jack sh What's the quote unquote old Need for Speed video long play thing doing for me now? Well, there's still people watching it because they're here to see gameplay. Not me being annoying talking 2 miles a minute about nothing. I don't like flooding my channel with irrelevant junk that was a hot topic for 2 days. Silent gameplays work for anyone passing by because they come there to see gameplay as a guide, nostalgic purposes, or just not deal with anyone with a pretty pretty face being in the way. I would do commentary if I want to interact with fans and the people interested in watching the videos. That's about it. So the way I go about with my style of long plays is basically beating a racing game using the same car I own in real life, which is the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 7 GSR. For those that aren't too much into cars, it's some four-door car that doesn't look like much when you don't decorate it with these crazy Fast and Furious parts, but it is very agile on turns. The particular car I have is plain white that looks stock, but most of the work is done on the hood rather than the appearance. In the automotive world, that's called a sleeper. When I'm customizing cars within my own will, I tend to leave the outside looks alone within Japanese cars. Because when I see these kids putting aftermarket cosmetic parts in Japanese cars, I see them insulting Japanese engineering. That sits pretty wrong for my Asian brothers and sisters. The sleeper style resonates with me because I'm the type of person that likes to blend in, act like an underrated underdog at everything I do, but let all my actions do the talking. That way, I can receive the proper recognition from the right people. I feel like playing these games at a major disadvantage on my end because it gives you that more realistic approach to test your skill using low resources. If you do it that way, winning will feel more rewarding. So applying to what I do, I handicap myself by avoiding the usage of nitrous, which is basically a way to boost your car for those not into that world. The reason for me of my refusal of using it is because it's bad for your car's health in real life, and let's just say I prefer to have my rides last a very long time. I know it doesn't have any effect in video games, but I like to make things kind of realistic to make each long play relatable. Now that we're on the topic about pseudo realism, if they don't have the same exact car in the game that I've been playing, I usually choose the Evo 8 or the Evo 9, or whatever's close to it. And no. I'm not in love with Evos. Let me get the record straight. I'm not obsessed with that car, nor is it my dream car today. It was my dream car as a teenager, but I was able to buy one eventually. It's just a car that I own in real life, and I just like to use whatever sports car I own in real life into a virtual game. If I own, let's say, a Dodge Charger SRT instead of a Mitsubishi Lancer in real life, you'd probably see videos of me beating racing games with the Dodge Charger instead a long time ago. 
so what got me into getting the Evo was thanks to this edgy teenager in Midnight Club 2 called Nico. You can't fault this guy. This show no go is part of his own style. What you running under the hood, player? He's some guy in Tokyo that you had to race near the end of the game. When I was younger, I admired his fashion sense and attitude that I felt inspired to be like him. But not too exactly like him, otherwise that's just going overboard. Mind you, around that time that game was made, there were a lot of trendy kids in Tokyo that dressed just like him. So going back into the car choice, I felt determined to own the same exact car he was driving one day, even if it was an old Honda Civic. And it finally happened on a fine 2014 thanks to family friends in Japan. So yeah, if you see a gameplay video that ends with the title Full Game by Reiji, that's basically my true style and vision on how I want to beat said video game. Here's my current ride at the moment, not planning on doing anything outrageous with it. It's a filler until the Evil 7 is legal to deliver in the United States. Because apparently, the United States has some stupid 25 year rule with shipping international cars for street use thanks to Benzo complaining about their sales back then. I still have the Evil 7 and it's in Japan, but thanks to the unfortunate events the year after 2019, Japan decided to isolate itself from other countries, so I don't really have access to alternate between the United States and Japan. Well, I used to hop between those two countries before that incident. But for now, this 2021 Subaru WRX STI Limited build will do. I just wanted to get something that's a current day version of the Evil 7 and blend in well with these new gen tuners instead of appearing as some outdated boomer stuck within his own ideals. So my plan with this ride, at least for YouTube, is that I'm currently trying to save up a lot of money to go cross country, emulating the same routes you see in various video games into real life. A new car like this would be practical because if I were to go cross country in a used car, chances are it's going to die out in the middle of the route. While I can't get too much into details with my plants because I have trust issues with certain people within this niche, because they uh, tend to steal ideas and not take credit where credit is due. Don't get me wrong, I can't wait to release great content out of this ride. I just need the money first. So yeah, that's my life story about my skills as a driver. I don't really enjoy looking at cars as much as I do driving them. That's where the real fun's at, to me at least. I actually enjoy driving in real life a million times more than playing racing games. And I'm not the type to boast about my skills. I just invest my energy to anything that people say I'm good at doing that can be beneficial for others. If I didn't have passengers, clients, and friends that truthfully say I'm good at driving, I wouldn't be out there practicing on racing tracks to get better. So it's all forced feedback, otherwise we wouldn't be here today. Or at least the content style would have changed drastically. Now I've tried to share my other side of my life to give you an idea of what inspires my thought process, but it seems like my core audience isn't that interested in knowing such things at the moment. I just like tossing random yet related things once in a while to express what else I'm capable of doing. For instance, I'm hungry for anything that's exciting in terms of that adrenaline rush. Sometimes I would apply my supposed good driving skills to travel out of town, mostly to party with the intention to study the environment, which is my way of learning different cultures. So too long didn't read version of that, drive around to go to raves out of town as an excuse to travel for fun. Now that we're well acquainted, or hopefully buddies, I can share my social media info. You can also check it out on the video description. I got a Twitter that's mainly used to talk about cars, my plans on YouTube, and to keep touch with my car contacts in Japan. Since posting content about going to music festivals and raves doesn't really work for me here, I have an Instagram to express that side of me. I don't talk about racing game stuff over there. Trust me, it mostly contains outdoor activities, social outings, and the stuff I do for fun outside of YouTube. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope as this channel grows, I can smoothly transition and expand upon different video styles without alienating my audience's interests. I basically post whatever I want when the time is right while I do my best to make it consistent. I hope that uh, shed some light about who I am and how I'm able to make cool videos for you guys. Hope to see you in the next one. Later.